Welcome to 5-ish Minute Friday. Now before we actually get into it, just need to let you know, my timeline was 24 frames per second and I filmed everything on this, the Osmo Pocket, and everything was filmed at 120 frames per second. You want to use the fastest frame rate you can when doing slow motion. In terms of the actual camera movement, I'm just pointing it sort of down, wigging it around, slowing down on the subject, doing a bit of movement and then whipping out. You look a bit of a pillock doing it, but you're doing a bit of that or just whipping from the side. You can whip it in and then slow down. You want to whip it, slow and then go again. If that's not very useful, let me know and I'll do another video where I'll show you all the actual camera movements and that sort of thing. Anyway, let's get to it. Roll the clip. Here we are folks in DaVinci Resolve. We're on the edit tab and I've already set my timeline frame rate. I've set this to be my base timeline frame rate, which is 24 frames per second. Make sure you do that before you import any media. It's especially important when doing anything with slow motion. Now, as I mentioned, all of these clips were recorded at 120 frames per second. Now, I want them all to play back at 24 frames per second because I want them to play back in slow motion. So what I've done is I've imported them as normal. I can then select them within my media pool right click, select clip attributes, and then set the video frame rate to be 24 frames per second. Now you can see I've already got some videos on my timeline. All I've done is I've cut the sections out from each of the clips that I want. So I've got rid of any of the mistakes that I don't need, and I'm just left with the sections that I do need. So this first one is just, it's of the church in slow motion. And then this is where I whip the camera down and point it to the grass, and then I cut. At that exact cut, that's where I want it to cut to the next clip. Now you'll notice the next clip starts from the ground and then whips up. So if I put those together, even at normal speed, in this section, the camera pans down, points at the grass, roughly matches the exposure, and the next shot, it comes up. If we go to the end of this one, this one comes down where it's quite dark and then cuts. And the start of this one is quite dark and it comes up. And you can see where I'm going with this one comes down to the pavement where it's quite bright and there's the, the, that texture. This one comes up again where it's quite bright. So now if I remove those spaces, put them all together, and I'll give you this example. This one comes up into the sun. The next clip comes in. That one starts at the sun and then comes down. The next thing we want to do, now we've got rid of all those spaces, we've put them all together. If we highlight them on the timeline, I can right click and I'm going to click new compound clip. I'm going to give it a name, whip and create. And all a compound clip will do is it will essentially treat all of those individual segments as one. So I can move this around the timeline now, I can cut it, I can do whatever, I can treat it like a single clip. And if I hit play, this one will whip down and then whip straight back up. Now the joy of a compound clip is you can do loads of stuff to this file like it was one single file. So now we just need to do our speed ramping. Now again, there is a video linked above where I'll show you in more detail how to speed ramp, but I'll show you really quickly now as well. So I'm going to left click, highlight this clip on the timeline. I'm going to right click and we're going to select retime controls and I'll open this section here on the timeline. Easiest way to do this, start at the very beginning of your section, hit play. This is the bit I want in slow motion. And as soon as my whip begins, which is right here, I'm gonna click on this 100% drop down. I'm gonna add a speed point. So that first section here is gonna be played in slow motion. And then from here, this is where my whip begins. So I'm gonna watch this through. And at this point right now, this is where I want it to go back to slow motion again. So my whip has finished. So we're gonna add a speed point here. This is all in slow motion. This is where I want my next whip to begin. So I'm gonna add a speed point. And at this point here, I want in slow motion. Whip begins here, so we'll add a speed point and just do this all the way through. and you'll end up with something like this. Now for all of the sections that are whips, all we're gonna do is click on the drop down, change speed, I'm gonna set it to 800%. And that will shorten down the whip section to 800% speed. 
So even if I play that now, let's have a look. This is all slow, and then it will speed up and whip round. So do that for all of those sections. So again, we've got normal, whip, normal, whip, normal, whip, etc. Now if we right click again, we're going to click on retime curve. And we'll get this screen. This is not what we want. We want to click this drop down here and go to retime speed. Untick retime curve. And we'll end up with this. So this is a line which represents the speed. So this line at the bottom is 100%. And as you can see, it jumps up to 800 here. Now, if 800 isn't fast enough, which it may not be, it's not for me anyway, if you click on this line on the 800, you'll get this scale over on the right-hand side. So the scale at the minute, the very top of this graph is 900. I want to increase that. So I'm going to drag that, give myself more room. We've we'll got to about 1500. And then I can drag this line and I can increase that speed even more. So I'm going to make that speed about 1200. It works for me. I like 1200. And we'll repeat that. So now we've got all of our whip transitions at 1200%. If I do a quick preview, this is regular speed. And then it whips straight down. That's starting to look a little bit better. Now at this point, you can actually make some minute adjustments. So if you're trying to line this up with music or whatever it may be, on this speed change here, wherever you set your speed points, if you click on the bottom icon, you can actually just start to drag that and move it exactly where you want it. So where do you want your, your whip to begin? I can move it to the left a bit, to the right. I can extend this one, extend the left one. Make those little adjustments, whatever you need to do to make sure it's perfect. And then last but not least, to really finish it off, if you click on these keyframes here on the graph, and then select this icon here, you can smooth them out. So rather than being real abrupt, go from 100 to 1,200% or whatever it may be, you can make it so it's on a curve. Now you can also, if you click on the icon, you get these appear. If we drag them to the right, you can increase that curve or decrease the curve, depending on how smooth you want those transitions to be. And if I just hit play now, we'll have a look. Much better. And that's it. Easy as that. Do that to music, add some sound effects, whatever you want to do. It's a really awesome and surprisingly easy way to make awesome whip transitions in DaVinci Resolve. And that's it. I hope that was useful, folks. Now, there are other ways that you can do that. I like doing it that way because it's the most visual. It's easiest for me to understand. But there you go. Hopefully it was useful. If it was, give me a thumbs up. Any comments or feedback? down below. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time. Cheerio!